it's me it's Brianka J uh, you won't believe this but I actually shot this video already and my file got encrypted and here I am again so if it's a little late I do apologize nevertheless I want to be here today I want to discuss um, Tina has said coats between the world sorry between the world and me and just some of the um, the beginning pages and it's gonna be awesome but before we begin all that my name is Brianka J. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, discussing all things lit. I do literary reviews, book recommendations, and then videos like this, which is a literary analysis. Where we get really into the nuanced details and break it down and get into the nitty gritty idea of what the book is about. So, let's get into this. I'm excited. I don't know why. Okay, so. Whoa. There we go. So, if you were to get this book, you would start off and notice that Tana Hesse Coates actually begins, uh, of course, with the poem, which I explained in my other video when I explained the title. You guys didn't like that one that much. I mean, it was the truth, though. So you see the poem, then you see the title again, and then he would have <clears throat> Sonia Sanchez's comment. I need to go over it. It's really good. I do not speak. Do not speak to me of martyrdom, of men who died to be remembered on some parish day. I do not believe in dying, though I too shall die, and violence like castanets will echo me. That's deep. I never saw that before. So beautiful. But anyway, so. The first page, he starts off son, comma, it's an anecdotal letter to his son, and he is pretty much going to start off by recalling this time that he went into a news station, and this broadcaster asked him a question, which he says is about his body. The question was, why is he presenting the theory that America's progress, or white Americans' progress, is based off of looting and violence? And Coates basically says the moment this lady asked this question, he was just immediately saddened. He's like, man, this question made a certain, he, I wrote it down. I felt an old and distinct sadness well up in me when he recalled the incident. Um, and the reason is, is because he feels as if this is a kind of conversation that comes up again and again. And he says he thinks that because it is rooted in our American history. Since 1619, Africans were brought to the country for the only purpose of labor. Can they labor for us? Can they build? Can they create for us in our name? So yes, the looting of people from a country is what he's first talking about. Uh, the violence of breaking away families, of lashing a person's back, of starving a person, of d demeaning a person, of calling someone and their children to be property for generations and generations to come. That is the looting and violence that he is talking about. He's talking about that looting and that violence. The very same looting and violence that Frederick Douglass talks about. The same looting and violence that Malcolm X talks about. The same looting and violence that Marcus Garvey talks about. Huey P. Newton, Tupac, Nipsey Hussle, Kendrick Lamar. Can I go on? I will not. But that is the looting and violence he talks about. So every time the question asks, him, like most black Americans, find themselves to feel like, bruh, stop playing with me. We read the same history books. We know the same history. I was forced to learn this every February because every time it's time to study black history, we gotta study slavery. But that's a different topic. Let me get back right, back into the book because you know, I could do that. So anyway, he goes on and by paragraph four, Coase claims that Americans who deify democracy or worship democracy have never betrayed their battle cry their hope for a government for the people. He says that we have always begged for a government that was for the people and recognized all people as equal. But he says this is where our mistake is. As black Americans, we may that we have disillusioned ourselves to believe that when the pe when the government, when white America says 
the people that they're also referring to black people. They are not. Um, he, he says it's right there in the language of our constitution, in fact. He says after being deemed chattel back in um, the 16, 1700s, uh, in the eyes of the government, Caucasian people have set themselves in all surety of their false sense, false sense of superiority. So what he's talking about is a time in American history where individuals, African American people, were considered chattel slavery. Chattel. Chattel is like cattle. It's a uh, property. It means that I am belonging to you and that if I was to have a child, my child also belongs to you and I have no more rights than a mule. That's chattel slavery and you are not deemed human anymore. So to consider yourself a people is also a disillusionment. Like when have white Americans ever deemed us with the dignity of being a person? When, when, when have we ever had our personhood validated by white America? That's what he's talking about. And then he goes on by paragraph five, he says, he felt that he had failed to properly convey his feeling towards America when the newscaster asked about hope. Coach reveals that, I realized I was sad when the journalist asked me about my body. Because he said that when you talk about America, you're talking about my body because every stone, every brick, every building, every city, the capital of our country is literally the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors. So he's saying, you're asking me about my body and you're and you're and you're challenging me about why I don't believe in the American dream and you're almost saying that I'm not patriotic when in reality I'm the most patriotic because I still have a definitive belief that we can change but first I have to wake you up from your gorgeous glorious dream and I am sad because ignorance is bliss and you look happy to be ignorant you look happy to sit next to me and ask me about hope when I am telling you that I have been systematically oppressed before I was even occurred or thought of. I've been systematically oppressed before my grandparents were, occur were occurred or thought of. That is the nature of this country. And yet, when I ask you about, when I talk to you about my pain, you bring me back to an idea of hope. And the hope is that we dismantle this and we create something that truly means all people. And we truly start living up to the idea of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for all people, and that inclusion to be black people, Hispanic people, immigrants, um, LGBTQ, white people, everybody. That is truly, that's the dream. And he's like, the fact that you're still talking about hope and not validating the, the reality that you're in a dream is a problem. And then finally he ends it, and Coates says, you know, Coates uses highly vivid imagery and diction to expose the heresies of the American dream. So throughout, throughout this, this, um, shit, I lost the word. Throughout this experience, this, this exchange with the journalist, Coates insists on the terms of bodies, which extends to include the country in itself. By describing African Americans and the country this way, Coates is able to reveal a highly popular idea that this country, America, is the byproduct of African American bodies since 1619 when they were first looted from West at the, uh, the coast of West Africa. And even before, African Americans have been essential to the formation of the country that most of the things that we enjoy in this country, the architecture, the literature, the, the arts, come from black people. And he says, yet still must endure a life that fails to even consider them to be people. And that is essentially the problem. And I know I got very animated and very um, emotional here, but I just, I, I felt so connected to this story and I felt so connected to his ideas here and that saddened face when you are left to explain yourself again a thou for the thousandth time to a white person who has had all the opportunities to educate themselves, who has sat in all the same history rooms and got called on more than you, and who was allowed into the nicer schools and the Ivy League schools before you, who had the opportunities to get better tutors than you, and then have to sit there and educate them on not black history, but 
American history. It's saddening and it's disappointing when we look back and people still stare and don't understand what we're talking about. But that's Tenehese Coates. That's Between the World and Me. And that is his take on the American dream and why it is rooted in violence and looting. I hope that you found this video to be helpful and enlightening and entertaining, of course. And if you did, I would love to hear from you by dropping me a little line in the comment box. It lets me, makes me feel so good to hear from you guys. And uh, make sure you subscribe if you liked it. And yeah, I would love to talk to you again in a couple days. Bye.